Okay, so we've seen that integration will give us the uh, area between a curve and the x-axis. And uh, we've got to adjust our method very slightly when some of the area lies below the x-axis as it does here. In all the examples I've looked at so far, the area has been above the x-axis. So let's see what happens if we just proceed exactly as before. And I'm going to try and integrate uh, this between minus 3 and 3 with respect to x. Uh, so what we'd get is x cubed over 3 minus 9x between minus 3 and 3. If you need any help with the integrals, go back to the previous videos. Um, and so what we'd use is substitute in 3. So I get 3 cubed over 3 minus 9 times 3. And I subtract what I get when I substitute in minus 3. Uh, so uh, let's work out what this is. So this is 27 over 3, that's 9, minus 27, so that's minus 18, and I get minus, and then in here I've got um, minus 3 cubed, that's minus 27 over 3, so that's minus 9, and uh, that's plus 27. So I've got minus 18, minus another 18, so that's minus 36 units squared. And we've ended up with a negative answer here, and we know that an area can't be negative, it's got to be positive. And what is actually happening here is that the uh, it's counting the area, but because it's below the axis, it's counting it as, it's counting it as negative. So areas above the axis are positive, and areas below come out of the integration as negative. So it's certainly the case that this integral uh, is equal to minus 36, that's certainly true but I can't really say anymore that the area is exactly equal to that integral. Um, the value of this integral purely as an integral without thinking about area is minus 36, but the area that we're looking for is plus 36 units squared. Okay. And when the area is totally under the axis like this, it's fairly easy to deal with. Um, one thing we've really got to watch out for is when the area is partly below and partly above, the axis which we'll look at in the next example. So in this one we've got y equals minus x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x and um, you can work out that this crosses the x-axis here at 2 and, and at 3 and I want to find out the total area enclosed by the curve in the axis. We've got some partly below and partly above uh, the axis here. So um, let's explore this a little bit. Uh, so Firstly, if I look just onto this bit between 0 and 2, um, based on our previous example, we would expect to be able to do the integral between 0 and 2 of the function, and that we would get this area here, but it will turn out to be negative. So let's just see how to do that. So uh, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. Similarly, keep going, so here we get 3x squared, between 0 and 2. And now we've got a 0 here, that can often be quite nice because when I substitute in 0 I'm just going to get 0, so I don't really need to worry about this lower limit, so I just need to substitute in 2, so I get minus 2 to the 4, so that's minus 16 over 4, plus 5 times 2 cubed, that's 5 times 8, or 40 over 3, minus 3 times 2 squared, so that's minus 12, uh, and that all works out to minus Eight thirds. So, uh, you know, based on what we've just said, this area, this bit of the area in here is going to be, you know, plus eight thirds uh, units squared. Now, um, what happens then if uh, I want to, you know, work out both of these areas? Um, well, you know, one thing I can just do is the integral between two and 3 of the same uh, function and that will tell me this second area here and then uh, you know I plug it, I do exactly the same thing so I'm going to get exactly the same function as I had up here but I'm now going to plug in 2 and 3 and when you do all of that you get uh, 5 twelfths okay so this area here is 5 twelfths and I've answered the problem because uh, you know, the area is this plus this, so the area is 8 thirds plus 5 twelfths, 
and that's 37 over 12 units squared. And that's the correct answer, and that's what we need to do here to work out the area. Um, so, yeah, that's the correct answer. What I want to just do is to try and shortcut this method, and we'll see, you know, we'll learn something important here about, uh, you know, about the integral and, and how it works. Okay, so um, you might say, well, I want the area between 0 and 3, so why not just do the integral between 0 and 3 of the function uh, and just do it that way, right? So again, I would get exactly the same, I would get exactly the same thing as we had before, minus x to the 4 over 4 plus 5 thirds uh, x cubed minus 3x squared, and I'm going to this time put in 0 and 3 and subtract uh, 1 from the other. Again, 0 is trivial, but I plug in 3, and what we get when you do that, if I just shortcut the uh, numerical work here, because I've worked it all out already, is minus 9 over 4. So, um, now, uh, that's clearly, uh, now that that's not the area between here and here, and even the positive version of this is not the area between here and here. So what's happened? How have we got this minus 9 over 4? Well, if you work it out, um, minus 9 over 4 is actually minus 8 thirds plus 5 twelfths. Okay. Uh, so, and remember, when we actually did the integral, this area, you know, this area came out as 8 thirds, but the integral here was not 8 thirds, but it was minus 8 thirds, because that bit's below the axis, and this one did come out as plus 5 twelfths, because it was above the axis. So what the integral does is, as it kind of adds up the area as it goes along here, it takes that minus 8 thirds, and it keeps it minus 8 thirds, and then it starts adding on the positive area. So what it's done is it's cancelled out 5 twelfths, you know, with the minus 8 thirds here. So it's tried to, it started offsetting this area against this area. So what we've ended up here, minus 9 fourths, is actually this area here, kind of with this offset. So it's, um, so it's the difference between the two areas that we've got, which isn't, isn't very useful, and we can't retrieve the uh, whole area from that without getting the individual parts. So the lesson here is if you've got an area partly below and partly above the x-axis, you do need to work out those two bits of area separately.